Okay, so thank you for joining us today for uh, our ERP um, review. We're going to be diving into uh, more content to add on to the series that we had earlier this, uh, this summer. One of the things that I want to talk about is to make sure that as you understand what D3 does and um, the role we play with our clients and in the market, a lot of things that we do are design and sales automation. So if a customer is trying to configure uh, estimation, uh, engineered order products to get drawings and things like that done with a click of a button, we have solutions to that have a PLM team to solve workflow gaps and operational workflows that an ERP system does not engage in. But at the end of the day, we're really kind of marching forward with a platform to help companies get to the digital transformation. And so again, today we're focusing on the master data. Uh, Josh is joining me today, and this is Daryl Price, and we've got Joshua Buff, who is our implementation consultant, who will be doing most of the conversation today and showing you the, the environment. But with document management, our goal is to help customers avoid you know, the chaos and the mistakes. And we believe with the D3 ERP system, which is built on top of CTEC, we have a solution to help companies achieve that. Uh, just a little overview on the solution that we're covering today, if this is a new topic for you. Um, the ERP system that we're covering is a fully functioning ERP system. So as a built-in accounting, everything is included in the solution. Uh, it is tailored and focused for manufacturing, specifically if you have uh, a lot of regulatory requirements, even if you deal with um, ITAR. Um, it is cloud-based, so modern functionality uh, removes the overhead that a typical ERP system is going to have um, completely 100% native. That's not to say that it can't exist on premise, though far in the majority of people use the solution fully web native. A little bit of overview. Um, we come into this kind of with unique um, presence in the sense that D3 is a user of the tool as well as a seller of the tool. So we consult companies to implement and stand it up, but we also have a sister division, Cush, who is owned by the same person and um, we use this. So kind of in, in uh, consulting speak, we eat own dog food. Uh, when you con consider what uh, the perspective of our owner would be, when you look at that, um, CTEC has really allowed us to scale as a company and to be able to grow. And it's removed a lot of the guesswork when you look at managing a company. Um, Joshua, from the implementation standpoint, when you consider uh, what he's seen in the field and in the customer's day-to-day -day activities, it's really started to change their ability to make moves and input, impact workflow very quickly. So with that, Joshua, I'm going to turn it over to you. Again, today we're talking about document management. So let me go ahead and stop sharing and give it over to you. Thank you, Dale. So uh, we're going to talk about document management going paperless while improving collaboration. Um, so as I'm sure that you all have issues with paper, um, you know, that's, that's how the world has worked for the last however many years. Um, but with these new tools, we have the ability to to store those important documents that are critical to our business um, in a very efficient, organized manner within the same ERP system. Um, so we're going to go over some of the features and benefits of doing that today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and log in here. So the, the first thing to, to discuss um, as we're going through this is there's all kinds of documents that in the course of a day-to-day -day business manufacturing that you have that you need to retain for various records. Um, that could be customer agreements, purchase orders, packing slips, uh, data collected in production, those types of things. Um, so we're going to go over how to, to store those and easily retrieve those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at um, customer agreements. And so you're able to store documents at nearly anywhere in the system, attach it to a record, and then it's easy to retrieve it because it's linked. So this, I'm going to show you an example of a customer agreement for a uh, a customer that you have. Um, so this, we're just going to go to the documents tab here on the, the lower left side. So you can see it's going to pull up the documents I have. 
So it's very simple. You click here and you would upload a file just like you would anywhere else on the web. Um, and then you're able to store it on the customer. Um, so in this case, we've got a customer agreement. And so that's just going to dictate the terms of how we've agreed to work, anything like that, this example it is. And you can store anything there that you want, their insurance, your insurance, whatever you would need. Um, so you can say, oh, this document was with this customer. You go to the customer and your documents are right here. I'm sure you've all been there where, you know, you, you send these documents, these PDFs out to your customers, you get them back, you print them off, you store them in a file cabinet. As the years go by, you accumulate more and more file cabinets. And so you either go through this massive process to consolidate all your data into the same cabinet, or you have multiple cabinets with similar types of data. So then now you're hunting through 15 cabinets instead of just one. So this completely eliminates that, that problem you have of saying, oh, I need this document. Well, it's gonna be under my customer. Um, so another benefit to uploading them here is also tags. So these are simple, um, you know, it's just a, it's a little searchable term that you're able to associate to a document that you can use to find a type of document. So if I'm typing in customer contract in my search, it will pull up every document that has the tag customer contract. Um, that's very, convenient. Um, and then as you can see in the menu here on towards the right hand side, is it the current revision, who uploaded it, when did they upload it, all of those details that are critical for you to know is this the most recent version or not. You'll also notice the blue button on the right hand side that says globalize. This is an important feature because I'm able to globalize this feature or I'm able to localize it. And so what that means is I can attach it to everywhere this customer is, or I can attach it to only this record. That is more beneficial on items like customer purchase orders, pack and slips, uh, you know, parts drawings for your engineering components. You can attach those there as well. Um, regardless of where at you're in the system, whether it's purchase orders, pack and slips, uh, tracking, um, RMA documents, it all looks the same as this, this view here. Um, so we're not going to go into each example because it's the exact same view. So the, the localized um, would be specific to a sales order or specific to, I only want it contained within this record versus global will be everywhere it's found in the system according to that record. So now we're going to go to the document list. So this is where you would be able to search all of your documents within the system. So this is where those tags come into play. So you'll notice I can put in a tag here um, and easily search and it's pulled up all documents that have a tag of QC. Um, so that makes it very easy to search for those documents. Um, I mean, if you're like any of the past clients I've had, you know, whenever there's that issue comes up that you've got a vendor or a, a customer asking for more information and then you have to take two days to go dig through cabinets and you have to talk to 15 different people, that's just not efficient. Um, and in the, the all my world, you know, that's, that's money, you know, you, you, that relationship, that those kind of things, you need that information very, very quickly. So here, anyone who has access is able to instantly look up the document and pull it up. You know, that's that kind of access is just not available within a paper world, especially if it's a couple weeks down the road or a couple months, paper copies get lost. So this is a great place to, to archive those. Um, you know, everyone's had that, that issue where do we receive our product? Did we not? Um, packing slips is a great place. As you issue a PO, the product comes in and your receiving department's able to upload that, that document directly to your purchase order. So later on down the road, you can say, okay, this is the exact quantity you received. This is the exact amount we paid. Those types of data is easily verifiable because if you're anything like the warehouses I've been in, sometimes they don't have the best filing system. Sometimes they just lay it on the desk and they get lost. Those things happen. Um, and this prevents that. Um, or in the other case, if you have a quality issue a few weeks or months down the road um, and you want to pull up what data did I actually collect at the time? What was the specification when it was torqued or, you know, secured? Um, um, you know, that's, that's just a mountain. Typically, it's just going to pile for future reference, maybe thrown in a box or a, a file cabinet. Um, this allows you to go directly to that specific work order and pull up what documents did we do, what quality checks did we do right there. So you're accessing that data in a matter of minutes across your entire company versus 
you know, a matter of days. So the next part we're going to talk about is custom documents. So custom documents are essentially a template that will auto populate according to the specific record in which you've attached it or created it for. This, uh, this is a very powerful tool. You know, if, if any of you guys out there ship, you know, NAFTA agreements, those kind of things, those are really long, tedious processes that you have some guy filling out and he's filling out that same form every time you ship to your customer. Um, nothing really changes. It's just specific to that order. You're able to actually create a template that when you select the link for the document, it will auto populate with all of the specifics of that order instantaneously. So you no longer have that loss of manpower of just simply filling out those documents, hoping that the data is correct. We're able to link that to specific data points within the software. So that populates at a, at a moment's notice. Good examples of these um, custom documents. Is you, I mean, anything you can imagine, we can pretty much create. Um, we're able to link it to any, virtually any point of data within the software, um, specific customer contracts, um, production documents. If you collect certain data every single time or you provide material traceability reports to your customers for um, the top level and all the subcomponents, serial numbers, um, custom labels for your production floor. Um, I've got a number of clients who are using those. Uh, it's a very, very powerful tool. So we're going to kind of look at what does that look like. So this is the custom document um, console here. So every document within D3ERP is actually a custom document that you're able to edit, and you're also able to create new documents. So they're all based in HTML. So they're insanely customizable. They can have whatever look and feel you want for your business. And like I said, we can link almost any type of data within that document. Now, I will say this, is that since it is based in HTML, unless you're proficient in it, we suggest you seek the help of a professional like D3. Now, once you have a custom document, you'll notice this is the actual you know, console for this specific document that I have that's custom. Now, you're able to download it, edit it, upload it. Now, say something goes wrong and you edited a system doc, you know, not one that you had created, but you just wanted to tweak a setting on a current doc or add a logo or something, something goes long, wrong, there is the option to revert to default, which is, is very valuable. Um, so then that guarantees that even if you're tweaking with this, you can still operate business if something goes wrong. Um, so we're going to move on to the quality aspects of document control. Um, I know a big concern out there is ISO, those types of standards. Um, there's a lot to, to consider and there's a lot on each individualistic quality need. So this is by no means one, one size fits all. You know, each individual company would need to make sure that all of these, these steps are in place specific to you. This is just a general overview of um, how D3 ERP can handle the compliance issues that you may have. So um, within the software, there's something called processes. And so you're able to create this process and then link multiple documents underneath it to meet some of those things, such as, you know, um, a, a quality manual, policy, and objectives. And then underneath those, you're able to link additional documents. Um, the process serves as essentially a primary location for document control, revision, and workflow approvals. Um, so document control, so you're able to, to publish a standard of your document and enable revision control. So you can say, this is my new revision. And throughout the software, whenever someone pulls up that document, it will only show the new revision. So you don't need to worry about an older copy floating out around there. Um, it will always show them the most current. Um, I know that that is a problem a lot of people have is that they'll publish an email uh, document via email and some guy will save it on his computer and he'll reference that for the next three years and he's five versions behind. So this eliminates this because it's all available through the browser. Um, with approval processes, you're able to structure those in the sense that um, only certain people are able to approve this and it goes through a specified workflow. And you're also able to see who uploaded it, when, who approved it, all of that history that you would want to see. So that meets the, the record tracking and traceability requirements of a lot of these compliance organizations. Um, so as you can see, I've got a quite a few or a couple um, processes here, and these are just dummy ones. And I also have the option to globalize and localize those as well, depending on the type of document it is. 
So under this, this process I've com uh, created called ISO compliance, um, you're also able to add notes. So as you're going through and updating things or suggesting things, changing things, everyone's able to get involved and kind of provide a history of what's going on. Um, I've simply added one sim simple note there, um, but this will read as a, you know, as a history of what's happened by the user. And then you're also able in a different view to actually go and view the, the system logs of all of those documents. Um, so some of the specific compliance things with ISO is going to be control of documents, um, control of records, an internal audit, um, how do you handle non-conforming products, corrective actions, and pre preventive actions. Now, the document control system within D3ERP meets all of those requirements for document control. You know, the approval, the traceability, all of those things. Um, all the data is easily accessible to anyone who you deem to have permissions to it. Um, so you no longer have to dig through these binders or these notebooks and keep all these paper copies up to date. Um, it makes it more seamless. You're going to save resources as well. Um, we've all been there where we have needed a document, we can't find it, and it takes two or three days to find it because it's in someone's top drawer, you know, that wasn't supposed to have it in the first place. So this eliminates all of those. When you're looking for something, you know exactly where it is because of what it's linked to, and you're able to pull it up at a moment's notice. Now, depending on your browser setting, it will either download for you automatically or just open up in your browser to view immediately. With our non-conformance flow that, that enters into the, the processes here, you're able to download those documents either individually or as a zip file. So it'll have all of the related quality issues, any photos, any notes, any of those things all in one document. So that's very, that's a very good benefit um, when you're reviewing those things for your audit. Preventive action, you're able to specify work instructions based off of a document that you're able to link to a specific component. So every time it goes through the shop floor, it says, hey, here's your quality workflow that you have to make sure you meet every single time. Um, so you don't have to worry about posting things on the wall or manually spreading word through tribal knowledge. Um, it's all formalized through the software. Um, and that is a big benefit just simply because that is a hard thing to manage to make sure that every single time you're working on an order, the proper process is followed. So you're able to extract those from your, your quality process and put those into production. Um, and that's what I've prepared today. Daryl? Okay, thank you, Josh. My button couldn't get to push. So thank you um, for covering that. One of the things as we go forward, we've got three more sessions that we'll be covering in the next three weeks. We've got workflow and collaboration. We've got the BI tool that's been added to the SeaTech engine. And then we'll be covering the last session will be on accounting. Um, again, as we cover document management, you can kind of start to see that there are several workflows there that almost start to mimic what a PLM tool does in terms of covering the, the, the life and of the document and the approval process as it goes through the tracking. But uh, again, this is within a very fully and rich uh, MRP and ERP solution that we are talking about. So again, thank you for time today. And as we wrap up, look forward to seeing you on the next one.